Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the superficial muscles of the back of the leg. Okay, these are the superficial calf muscles. So we have the muscle at the back of the leg, we call them calf muscles. We have superficial muscles and the deep muscles. The superficial muscles are the gastrocnemius, soleus and the plantaris. The deep muscles are the popliteus, then the tibialis posterior, then flexor digitorum longus, then flexor hallucis longus. Okay. I will discuss about the superficial muscles. Those are called also called triceps suri, the gastrocnemius soleus, and also the plantaris. So we we'll go through that. So we have the muscles, so if the muscles to the back of the leg, we have the gastrocnemius, gastrocnemius, and soleus. Gastrocnemius has two head. One is the lateral head. Another one is the medial head. Okay. And soleus. So these two together is called triceps suri. Okay. So superficial muscle on the back of the leg also include another muscle that is called plantaris. That muscle is vestigial, it may be absent in around 10% population. So gastrocnemius, this is the lateral head of the gastrocnemius gastrocnemius okay this is the medial head of medial head of gastrocnemius gastrocnemius okay so you got that and this is the muscle this is the plantaris muscle plantaris muscle okay so we got that gastrocnemius soleus what is soleus this is soleus soleus is under the cover of the gastrocnemius gastrocnemius is superficial than the soleus okay we got that so this is it is underneath the gastrocnemius the soleus muscle and the medial head is larger than that of the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. So this is the plantaris muscle, small muscle, very long tendon. That tendon passes between the gastrocnemius and soleus. Okay, this is the soleus muscle. Okay, this is the soleus muscle here. You can draw it like this way. Soleus muscle. This is soleus so leus it looks like a soul and this is again the plantaris plantaris and it is a very long tendon thin tendon of the plantaris here the tendon of the plantaris so we go through the origin insertion nerve supply of the muscles of the superficial muscles of the back of the of the leg, first of all, gastrocnemius, gastrocnemius muscle. Okay, gastrocnemius muscle. What is its origin? Okay, we have the lateral head. We have the medial head. Okay, so from where the lateral head is coming? Lateral head is coming from the up, from the lateral aspect of the upper part of the lateral condyle of the femur. So 
with con lateral condyle of femur. Condyle of femur. Okay. So it also takes origin from the from the lower part of the of the lateral supracondylar line. It also takes origin from the fibrous capsule of the knee joint. Okay. Medial head. Medial head is coming from the popliteal surface just above the medial condyle of the of the femur above the medial condyle condyle of the femur femur okay from the popliteal surface from the popliteal surface and the area area behind the adductor tubercle of okay. adductor tubercle of okay. we got that it also takes origin from the fibrous capsule of the knee joint we got the origin of the gastric nemius now we learn the insertion okay look at that origin here it forms the boundary of the popliteal fossa okay it forms the the inferomedial boundary inferolateral boundary of the popliteal fossa gastric nemius origin you go to the insertion 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 via the endoachilles this is the endocalcaneus calcaneus also called tendoachilles or okay, insertion via the endo Achilles or tendocalcaneus or calcaneal tendon okay to the posterior surface of the calcaneum okay so posterior surface has the upper upper part middle part lower part it is inserting to the middle one third of the posterior surface of the calcaneum okay we got the insertion of the gastric nemius muscle we got the origin of the gastric nemius muscle okay now what is the blood supply blood supply we just remember what blood vessels are present here this is a popliteal fossa we get the gastric nemius will get blood supply from the popliteal artery but we are it will get blood supply from the genicular artery it will get blood supply from the posterior tibial artery okay we got the blood supply now nerve supply okay nerve supply is very easy to remember all the muscles at the back of the leg are innervated by the tibial nerve okay by means of the tibial nerve okay this is nerve supply of the muscles at the back of the leg root value is s1 s2 usually s1 and s2 okay that is the root value of the tibial nerve for the gastric nemius muscle also for the soleus muscle same nerve supply okay we got the the gastric nemius now we'll go to the soleus okay so soleus takes origin from the both the tibia and fibula okay soleus origin from the origin from both the fibula and tibia okay so we got the bone here with the condyle medial condyle 
we have the origin for the medial head of gastric cranius, lateral condyle, origin of the lateral head of the gastric cranius, and we have the the soleus. Soleus has no origin from the femur. Soleus has origin from the tibia. Soleus takes origin from the 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 tibia from both the both the fibula and tibia from the upper one fourth of the from the upper one fourth of the posterior surface of the fibula and from the solar line of the tibia okay so you got that so upper one fourth of the posterior surface of the fibula and also from the this one another origin is from the solar line line of the tibia and medial border of the tibia border of the tibia so this is the muscle takes origin from both the fibula and tibia from the posteriors posterior aspect okay so it is a muscle of back of the leg so it should come from the posterior surface of the bones okay we got that so it has an arch arch because it is coming from tibia and fibula there is an arch okay arch of origin okay origin it is called arcus tendinus soleus arcus tendinus soleus and underneath the arcus tendinus soleus we have the popliteal artery popliteal vein and tibial nerve okay so that passes under the arch of origin of soleus it is called arcus tendinus tendinus soleus okay we have the artery we have the popliteal vessel popliteal vessel and we have also in the we have also popliteal vessel we have also the the tibial nerve okay this structure passes underneath the arch of the origin of soleus one is the artery and that is the vein is the nerve tibial nerve okay we got the origin of the soleus insertion okay insertion insertion of the of the soleus by means of the tendo achilles to the posterior one third of the calcaneum like that of the of the gastric nucleus now we go to the plantaris muscle it takes origin along with the lateral head of gastric nucleus from the upper part of the lateral condyle of the femur of so lateral condyle of the femur insertion it is the origin it is the origin what is the insertion 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 is along with the tendocalcaneus it may be fused with that of the tendocalcaneus tendocalcaneus or tendo achilles or calcaneal tendon or it may be just medial or deep to the tendocalcaneus to the calcaneum directly it may insert on the allocation and this muscle is absent absent in around 10% population about 10% population it is absent and this muscle has a very long tendon 
tendon is very long okay is very long okay so sometimes the freshman students the students in the first year in the course we call them freshman student in, in, the, in the United States. The freshman student may think this is a nerve, so they may cut it. So it is called freshman nerve. But it is not a nerve, it is a tendon. Tendon of the plantaris muscle. Okay, so it is mistaken by the freshman as a nerve because it is color is white because it is collagen, so almost like the color of that of the null, so it is confusing. Okay, we got that. So what is the action of plantaris? Plantaris is a very small muscle, so they not very much significant uh, action. It may work along with the, the gastrocnemius, especially lateral head, and along with the tendocanchineus. So it may flex the knee joint also flex the also was plantar flexion so we got that so we got to know the action of the muscles actions of the these muscles of the muscles what are the actions okay gastrocnemius gastrocnemius passes over the knee joint passes over the ankle joint it work on two joints it flexes the knee joint it also cause plantar flexion of the ankle joint soleus just work on the ankle joint okay gastrocnemius contains first twitch type 2 white fibers so for a very quick action for running jogging okay or very much active uh, athletic activity we need the gastrocnemius soleus for sustained action type 1 fiber red fiber slow twitch fiber soleus for sustained action for standing for long time okay that is the soleus these are the actions of the muscles of the back of the leg Soleus muscle give insertion just throughout the length of the tendo Achilles. So it, it, it give insertion to the tendon. We start from the middle of the leg and up to this. Okay. Up to the lower part. We got the insertion of the muscles and the actions of the muscle. Now we go to find some clinical anatomy. Okay. We discuss in the tendocanchineus, it may be cut, ruptured, there may be tendinitis. So today I will discuss about the muscle. We may have gastrocnemius strain. So gastrocnemius strain, especially in case of, we call it tennis leg tennis leg that is possible in a person who is not equestrant or he is suddenly a novice individual over the age of 40 or maybe young age but without conditioning started very much very much active uh, sports or game they may have gastrocnemius a strain okay that is possible okay we got that Soleus muscle. Soleus muscle may be the site like other calf muscle, but mostly in the soleus, it may be the site of venous thrombosis. The thrombus may be released from the venous thrombosis, may go through the venous channel, through the popliteal vein then the femoral vein, external iliac vein, common iliac vein, inferior vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, pulmonary artery, and the embolus may block the pulmonary artery. 
So that may lead to pulmonary embolism. Okay, we got the clinical anatomy for soleus. Another important point is that of the plantaris. Plantaris tendon may be used to take it away and to use for the grafting of the tendon. If we have any damage to this tendon in the hand, we can easily take the tendon of the, that person, we can graft it. So plantaris tendon, it may be used for grafting grafting the missing tendon the missing tendon anywhere in the body okay so that's all about the clinical anatomy and that's all about the superficial muscles of the back of the leg if you like my video please support my channel please subscribe me and share the information with your friends if you have any question please feel free to ask me and have a nice day bye now